What's up, DS3CD? We are back for another video. This one is Simple History, Fall of, King, of Hong Kong, 1941. And uh, yeah, this one should be good. Also, I kind of want to tell you guys, I think I'm going to do something on Saturday, along with other the other reaction videos that I have planned. Um, and we're probably going to do... Uh, um, maybe like a, I was thinking maybe something new, something kind of new, but it's still going to be a reaction, but it's just going to be like a new type of reaction. Um, you know, maybe, um, something, something like a, you know, we're going to like, like maybe like read like some Reddit posts or something like that. Maybe. I don't know how you guys, I don't know how everybody feels about that, but yeah, um, I'm going to put that out along with other videos on Saturday and, uh, yeah. So hopefully you you all like that and let's get into this video and play. Fall of Hong Kong, 8th to the 25th of December, 1941, World War II. Hong Kong had been established as a British crown colony since 1842 after the first opium war. It consisted of Kowloon on the mainland and Hong Kong Island. This colony in the south coast of China was densely populated by a majority Chinese population and was a symbol of British power in the Far East. Initially, Winston Churchill regarded the territory as an outpost and would not reinforce it against impending attack and reduce the British garrison there to fight the ongoing war in Europe. From September 1941, he reversed this decision and increased the manpower of the garrison with Commonwealth troops as a military deterrent against the Japanese forces. The 12,000-man garrison, commanded by Major General Christopher Maltby, consisted of the British Army and Commonwealth forces in the form of the Canadian and Indian armies and the Hong Kong Voluntary Defense Corps. A single destroyer and several motor torpedo boats also provided support from the sea. Three battalions of British and Indian troops were deployed by Maltby along a defensive line north of Kowloon on the leased territories of the Chinese mainland. They were the 2nd Battalion, Royal Scots in the west, the 2nd Battalion, 14th Punjab Regiments in the center, and the 5th Battalion, 7th Rajput Regiments in the east. Set up in pillboxes and trenches, stretching for 18 kilometers, they would defend the Gin Drinkers Line, which was believed to be able to hold against the Japanese for several months. While two inexperienced Canadian battalions, the Royal Rifles of Canada and the Winnipeg Grenadiers, as well as the British 1st Battalion, Middlesex Regiment, were deployed on Hong Kong Island to the south, defending its beaches. The Japanese forces, led by Lieutenant General Takashi Sakai, had around 52,000 men of the 38th Division of the Japanese 23rd Army at its disposal, therefore outnumbering the British and Commonwealth forces four to one. Hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese launched their attack on Hong Kong from the air, destroying several British aircraft at Kai Tak Airport. The Japanese 38th Infantry Division crossed the Sham Trun River into the leased territories on the mainland. The three battalions defended the Jin Drinkers Line, but it was breached at the high ground of Shing Mun Redoubt by the Japanese during the night of the 9th of December. D Company of the Winnipeg Grenadiers were sent to reinforce the mainland defense, but the line could not be held. And by the 11th of December, Maltby started to evacuate the British and Commonwealth troops to Hong Kong Island, with the 5th Rajput Battalion as the rear guard. The Japanese had demanded surrender of the British and Commonwealth defenders, but both requests were rejected. Maltby organized the defending forces into a West Brigade, mainly composed of the brigades that had evacuated and the Winnipeg Grenadiers from the mainland. East Brigade composed of the Royal Rifles of Canada and two companies of the Rajput Regiment. The British 1st Battalion, Middlesex Regiment and Hong Kong Defence Corps supplemented both brigades. On the 18th of December, the Japanese landed its forces between North Point and Aldrich Bay. At North Point, the defending Rajput Battalion was virtually wiped out, resisting the Japanese to the end. The East Brigade... Respect to them that they fought, that they fought all the way, though. Like, you know, until the, until the better end, honestly. ...moved to the Stanley Peninsula in preparation to counter-attack, but was without artillery pieces during its withdrawal. The next day, the Japanese army attacked the Wang Nai Chung Gap on the western side. 
destroying the HQ of West Brigade, resulting in the death of its commander, Brigadier John Kelburn Lawson. The British could not successfully recapture the Wang Nai Chung Gap, therefore the Japanese army had driven a wedge between the defenders, splitting the defense in two between the West Brigade and East Brigade, defending the Stanley Peninsula. When the Japanese also captured the reservoir, the British forces' fresh water supply would grow desperate, along with the already dwindling ammunition supplies. On the 25th, Christmas Day, the field hospital at St. Stephen's College was captured by the Japanese forces. Despite surrendering, many of the British and Commonwealth soldiers and medical staff were tortured and killed by the Japanese soldiers. Later in the day, it was clear any further resistance would be futile. I mean, honestly, it, I mean, depending on it, it would have been better to just fight to the end, honestly, because it seems like that Japan didn't, they weren't going to care if you did surrender. So you might as well just die, just die. I would have, I would have to say, I think, I, I think that was, that was the better, that was the better option just to die in battle. After requesting a ceasefire, Maltby surrendered and the governor of Hong Kong turned the colony to Lieutenant General Takashi Sakai. This day would become known as Black Christmas. Most of the garrison did not escape and became prisoners of war. The attack was in violation of international law as Japan had not declared war against the British Empire. The British and Commonwealth defenders numbered around 4,400 casualties, while the Japanese casualties numbered around 2,700. Subscribe for more World War II videos. Get your copy of. Oh, that was a good. That was a good video. But uh, yeah. So, um, remember to subscribe to the channel. Recommend videos down in the comment section down below. Also, um, yeah. So remember, it's gonna be a video on Saturday. That's kind of different, but kind of along the lines of reaction um, content. Um, yeah. So talk to you guys in the next video and peace.